Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm making a new video today, as you can obviously tell, and it is all about sewing pins and their uses. And I'm specifically going to be showing you guys some of the pins that I have because I got a comment on a photo that I posted in Reddit the other day of someone who liked my costume and they thought that the seams were clean. They were like, oh, you know, I had actually never even heard of, you know, these types of pins. So I was just like, okay, well, if you didn't know about them, I was like, I wonder how many other people didn't know about them. And, you know, we obviously don't know what we don't know. And once upon a time, I didn't even know that there were different pins for different fabrics and stuff like that so i'm actually just going to show you guys like in a quick little video today the differences in some of the pins that i have and just kind of go over the usage for each so uh thank you so much for popping in to see me again um let's go ahead over to my sewing table and get started all right everybody so let's get started um one of the things that i didn't realize when it came to sewing when i first started was that there were different pins for different fabrics i used to just think that whatever pins came inside of the little sewing kit packages i would get were the ones that were appropriate for me to use on everything i had no idea that there were different types of pins for different types of fabrics and so now that i do know this information i want to share it with you guys because like I said, I was in Reddit and someone had told me that they had never heard of satin pins, where for me, I have so many different pins here for different types of projects. So I'm going to get into them and show them to you guys right now. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for being here. And if you like what you see before the end of the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that you can see more tips from me. So the first set of pins I want to talk about are probably the ones that everyone is most familiar with and that is ballpoint pins. These pins have little decorative balls or pearls at the end of it and these come in your run-of-the-mill sewing kit. I believe I actually got this one out of a sewing kit. Um, that came with a couple of other sewing tools and things of that nature but these are probably the ones that everyone is most familiar with um, i would say these are probably the first type that you get to play around with these pins are really good for fabrics such as cotton um, light wool light uh, fleece things like that um trying to think I think the last time I used some of these pins was when I was making my anime NYC cosplay Utena. You can head over to my Instagram at Kia Sangria NY to take a look at that costume. But I think that was the last time I used ballpoint pins. And they come in many different designs. I have some on a pin cushion right here. They also come in different uh, lengths and widths too. So I don't know if you can see there. I wish I had something. <laughs> to put on the back for you guys, but um, they're like two different lengths. So you can get them in different sizes, different types of thickness. These are good for um, general fabrics, nothing particularly specialty, and I have a lot of these. I tend to keep my sewing pins inside a little container when I work, and these are a mixture of pins. There's no rhyme or reason to this little container. There's a little bit of everything inside of it. Um, I tend to keep that next to me when I'm sewing and also a regular pin cushion. So I actually have some other ballpoint pins here that I have not yet opened. And yeah, if you go to your local craft store or if you just go online, you'll probably be able to find the same pack. They come in different types of colors and they come in different amounts. So this is an 80 piece box here and they are great for use on knit fabrics so you can use them for knits they are four millimeter multicolored heads and they are nickel plated so you can find these at your local craft store like a joann's or any type of sewing store around you i'm pretty sure you can find them at walmart as well these i just so happened to get in new york city at a trimming store called pacific trimming i go there for a lot of my things so i picked these up from there Okay, so for my next set of pins, I'm going to get into some pins that I use a lot, so I tend to buy a lot of these. 
Um, we are going to talk about both satin and silk pins. And I actually have a small pack of these types of pins open now, but satin and silk pins are both pins that are used for slippery and soft fabrics such as uh, silk and satin. And I have a small sample of poly silk here, which I use for linings. And then I have some uh, Charmise satin here. And so these pins are really good for fabrics like those just because these fabrics are so delicate and I don't know if you can see on the side there, but they do fray a lot. And so when you're fiddling with this fabric for a very long time, when you're in the middle of making something, you will notice that it starts to come apart. So it's really important that you have pins that are sharp and can hold these pieces together when you're working with them. Additionally, these pins are very thin and so they won't leave holes in your fabric the way that a regular ball pointed pen might and they also go through your fabric a lot easier so one of the things that i encountered when i first started creating costumes and garments was that i would use my ball pointed pins on fabric like this and what would happen is that i would try to pin it and I would struggle to get the pin through because sometimes the pins themselves can be very thick and you're trying to force it through a very tightly woven but delicate fabric and so I would create tears in my fabric trying to force the pin through it and so I looked for other alternatives and I discovered satin and silk pins which will help me get the job done without damaging my fabric. This is super important to me, so I tend to reach for these whenever I sew linings or dresses or anything that comes from a delicate fabric. If it frays and it's thin, I will go for these types of pins. I have three different types. These here are brass dressmaker pins, and these are for medium weight fabrics. I use these when making dresses or anything um, that calls for like satin and silk. I also have some extra long satin pins, which are I would pretty much use for the same purpose. Um, I bought these because they were on sale, and when my pins in this box get thin or worn out, then I can go ahead and switch over to this one. And so the characteristics of this says that they're for light to medium weight fabric and they are extra long pins with a tapered point. So I would kind of compare these to being the same type and how they appear. Uh, just these are longer than these ones here. And these are the extra long satin pins. And then I have the silk pins, which also look very similar. And the characteristics on here say these are used for silk and synthetic fabric. So again, these two slippery fabrics right here, these pins would be really great to have. So if you are someone who, you know, sews with satin or you're looking to sew with satin, if you're making a dress or like a gown or something, I really do suggest going out and getting a pack of dressmaker pins, satin pins, silk pins. I'm a firm believer in using what you have available. So if you go to the store and they only have extra long satin pins, go ahead and get that. It'll still work for your fabric. You don't specifically have to go out and get like multiple different types of pins like I did. Um, that is not necessary. I'm just a little extra that way. I have these pins here. These are called T-pins, and I'm just gonna open up this little box for you. These are called T-pins, um, and I don't know if you can see it clearly there, but these are called T-pins because they, they look like the letter, the letter T here. These pins are used for thick fabrics. I've used them when making like wool coats and stuff like that. You can also use them for upholstery. They're really good for that. I do not reach for these that often just because I do not use those types of fabrics often. Um, side note, if you're a wig maker, then you would sometimes, you know, you can use these for like pinning wigs and wefts to 
um, caps and stuff like that, or I'm not gonna get to that today. Do let me know if you would like to see me sew a wig, um, because that is also something that I am able to do and I'm pretty good at it. Um, so yeah, you can use these for all types of things. Upholstery is the common way that I've seen them used. Um, I, not too long ago, had put together a new um, cover set for my mother's um, outdoor porch furniture and these are the pins that I use to hold that material together. So these are not so common. You can go out and get them but I wouldn't say if you're a beginner that it's a set of pins that you would need. I just so happened to grab these while working on a very specific project and I don't think that I've used them since. So you can go out and get these. I don't think that you'll need them unless you're looking to sew like upholstery or other types of furniture projects, then these would probably be good for you. The set of pins I have are actually not, not pins, they're clips. Um, these are called Wonder Clips. I keep mine in a little Ziploc bag. And these are a pin alternative. So if you, let's say you didn't want to use any of the collection of pins that I have here you can always use wonder clips for your projects there's nothing wrong with that they work just as well as regular pins and they're also pretty cute so my bag has like a ton of colors in the inside and I think they're really adorable and these are the clips so I actually recently used these on a project where I made a white leather jacket dress. You can head over to my Instagram to take a look at that one as well at Kia Sangria NY. But I used these for that project because different materials play differently with pins and I realized when pinning a sample of the fabric that two things would happen. When using my regular ball pointed pins, my all purpose pins, they would bend. They actually wouldn't get through the fabric and if they did get through the fabric they would be bent making them unusable for future projects. And when I tried using a dressmaker pin just to experiment the pin couldn't even get through the fabric. So for me that told me basically that the only type of needle that is actually going to get through the fabric is a needle from a machine that's you know going to have a little bit of force behind it speaking of which this is the machine that i actually used for that project this is the st 150 hdh it's the brother heavy duty machine let me know in the comments down below if you would like to have a video all about this machine because it's really good i've made two wool jackets on it i've made a fur jacket on it and i have just now recently completed a white leather jacket dress using this machine and this machine sews through that material like butter but in terms of pinning it and putting the pieces together, I really had to use Wonder Clips in order to hold it together, which worked really well. They did what they needed to do. Um, I have no complaints. So if you are in the market for pins or you're just getting started to sewing, I do suggest picking up a pack of ballpoint pens. Um, they come in your sewing kit, so you should already have some, but in the event you need more, go ahead and pick up more of these. I don't think you could ever have enough of the ballpoint pins just because you'll find that you'll use these more often than other pins. Unless you're a cosplayer, then of course you're probably working with a multitude of fabrics like I am. So that is the reason why I have so many different types of pins because I'm constantly working on something. And when I am working on something, it's always with a different fabric. I like to alternate my projects based on the fabrics that they use just because I love to be able to get experience with different types of fabric. Um, so yes, ballpoint pins are something that you do need. They're very easy to obtain. And then there are specialty pins like satin and silk pins. It all depends on your project. Different project calls for different fabrics will then call for different pins. Now, this is not me telling you that for every single project you do, go out and buy specific pins for it. Please don't do that. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that personally. I would try to use what I have if I could. 
but I do think there are some basics that I think you should have. So I'll leave a list in the description box below of the pins that I think you should have when you're first starting to sew or whether you've been sewing for quite some time because again, I was in that Reddit group and someone told me, you know, I have actually never even heard of satin pins, but they were a very experienced sewist. Um, but I hope this video helped you. Please let me know if it did. And if you have any more questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you so much for coming to check out my video and I will see you in the next one. If you would like, please hit that subscribe button and then visit some of my social links down below so that you can see some of the projects that I've created and get a look at what I'm working on next. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for chilling with me. Bye.